Today we'll talk about the best practices for building planning analytic workspace books for iPad consumptions. So in this video we'll talk about how do we build the planning analytics books and dashboard so that they can be consumed on the tablets so that we stay relevant in today's world with planning solutions. So first of all let's start with the best practices for what should we keep in mind when we're building books for the tablet consumptions. So here we open the standard planning analytics workspace books. We, it has multiple sheets in the book. First is the scorecarding metrics, then we have some revenue analysis, capital analysis, and payroll analysis tabs. Within each of the tabs, we have some visualizations, we have some filters, and we also can do some data entry at the areas that we are interested. Let's open the same book on the iPad and see what it looks like. First of all, all the books that you build on a desktop can be consumed and open on the iPads. So when we open the same book on our iPad, you can see that the view is the same as we just had on our desktop. We have all the same tabs or sheets that we had in the book. And within each of the sheet, we have the filters that we can work with. And we have all the widgets that we've built on the desktop. However, when we are consuming the books on our tablet devices, there are certain restrictions that we have to keep in mind to achieve the best practices for the end user. First of all, it's the scrolling area. So for example, here, I just opened the revenue analysis tab. I have multiple charts on the same tab, but in order for me to see each one of the charts, I have to scroll to that chart. So if we are building the books for the end user who will be consuming them on tablets, always make sure you have a bit of real estate space for the user to scroll through, because if we don't have any real estate for scrolling, once the user clicks on the widget, he will be scrolling within this widget. So for example, here, I'm gonna open a capital analysis tab. And on this tab, I have multiple charts and exploration, but I have a very little space for the user to scroll around. And on the tablets, if the user clicks on the widget, such as here, I clicked on the exploration and tries to scroll, the user will be scrolling within that exploration widget. So in order to easily scroll within the tab, within the book, it would have been easier for the user if there was a bit of a space left for navigation and scrolling around. Second area that I want to concentrate on the iPad is your filters or dimension drop-downs. As you can see, all the filters that we have on the desktop are available for us on the iPads. However, when you are building the books for the end user who will be consuming them on the iPads, I find it's personally easier to use dimension selectors rather than dimension drop-downs because it gives us a, list, a little bit more real estate space. Thirdly, I would recommend breaking one tab that has multiple widgets into multiple tabs. So with all this information in mind, let's return back to our desktop and let's take this Smart Code 2 book and redesign it, keeping in mind the concepts that I covered, such as real estate space, dimension selector dropdowns, and breaking the book that has multiple widgets into the book with multiple tabs and widgets belonging to these multiple tabs. Okay, so first of all, let's save as this book. And we're going to put it in shared, and we're going to call it Smart Code Mobile. All right. And let's go through the concept that I've described earlier, such as changing the layout of the book so that we have more space for users to scroll around. Secondly, instead of dimension drop-downs, let's use dimension selectors because they just give a little bit more space for the users on the iPad.
Okay, now that we've rearranged our book and we changed dimension drop down to dimension selectors, let's do one last thing and change the general style to be change the background color. I just find it works better on the tabloids for navigation. All right, let's save our book and now let's open this same book on our iPad. Open the SmartCo mobile book and let's take a look at revenue analysis tab that we have just created. So you can see now here that we have the scroll area on the right hand side. It is easier for the user to scroll up and down. Dimension drop downs has also been replaced with dimension selectors. So here the user can right away quickly see how all the context is available for him to choose from. And he can filter the book. So this is one of the examples how you can take an existing planning analytics workspace book and make it a bit more mobile friendly by giving the user a little bit more real estate space to scroll through by using dimension selectors rather than dimension drop downs for easier visual clues. And I personally like to change the background color of the books if I know they will be consumed on the iPad because it just gives brighter background context for user to work with. So with all of that in mind, now that we are on the iPad, what about the other gestures that are important for users, such as data entry and right-click and context menu? In order to access the right-click context menu, what the user needs to do is simply click on a cell in his grid and the three-dot context menu pops up. So once you click on it, you get your right-click mouse menu that you would get on the desktop. If you want to close the menu, you just click somewhere else on the grid and the menu disappears. On your right-click context menu, you have the same functional that you have on the desktop. You can hold, release, hold, show cell value as, or clear the cell. You can also show the context menu by clicking on, on the header of the row or column, and then you'll get the context menu for that row or that column. And it will be, again, the same as you have on the desktop. The most important thing is how do we get into the edit mode so we can actually contribute the data. And that's very simple. Uh, in order to get into the edit mode on the iPad, just simply click on the cell and do a long hold. Once you let it go, you will get the keyboard popping up and you can use the data entry same as you can on the desktop. So for example, here, if I wanna use the shortcut for 5k when i enter 5k click return the keyboard goes away and the 5k shows me entry of 5000 last but not least chat functionality that is available on your desktop is also available on your ipad so on the ipad simply open your chat panel and start typing click return the keyboard goes away post the comment the comment is now posted that's it Thank you very much for watching.